Hey, this is Unrefined Podcast. I'm Brandon Spain, your host. Welcome to another dynamic episode. Welcome, you guys. This is part two of a riff that I'm doing on discernment. And this one's not going to be too terribly long, but it's just something that I... I think is crucial to the first one. Now, if you, if you kind of, as a, if it's been a while since you've heard my last one, I want to kind of review that a little bit. I talked about scripture and how we need to be permeated and saturated with scripture. We need to have that basis sort of, so to speak for God to speak to us and the Holy spirit to use, to correct us, to rebuke us, to guide us, to direct us, all those kind of things. But most of all, to give us discernment, the Holy spirit is our guide and our counselor. And we need to avail ourselves of his gift of us. That is a huge gift to be given to us by the Holy Spirit. So what I'd like to talk about today as far as discernment is is something that has to do with character and integrity. And it is humility. Now, humility is a difficult topic to talk about, particularly when you're talking about it in your own life. I mean, you have one ditch where you say, well, I'm so humble and da, 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 which actually shows the the exact opposite. But then at the same time, you need to be able to talk about humility. You need to be able to talk about it's a noble virtue. You need to be able to talk about how God's working it out in your life and in areas that you've grown in humility. That's not unhumble to talk about areas that you've grown in humility. What's worse is to have false humility, like, oh, uh, poor pitiful me, I am so bad, whatever. You know, it reminds me of the old joke about the new pastor who preached his first sermon and the lady was walking out and she said, great sermon. He said, no, it wasn't me. It was the Holy Spirit. And she said, it wasn't that good. So anyway, ha ha. But what what I'm trying to get across to you guys is humility. You know, the sin that caused Satan to fall was pride. And the sin that caused most of us to fall is pride. I mean, that's the center of of a lot of your psychological and mental disorders is pride, narcissism, pride, you know, socio-psychopaths, different stuff like that that I've studied and everything. Pride is is up there. You know, and and then in some of them with codependency, it's it's still pride. Anytime we're, we're so focused on ourselves to the to the detriment of others and to the Lord, it's 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 a pride oriented type thing. Well, the reason I wanted to talk about this is it it involves a scripture in James, which I'm reading through right now. And James says it like this, God gives grace to to the humble. God affronts the proud, but gives grace to the humble, despises the proud. I mean, you could put any kind of word in there. The basic gist is, is God is against the proud, but gives grace to the humble. That grace in there, that, that word charis, it, it it's the same where we get, you know, we talk about our grace gifts or we talk about uh, just grace in general. And, and you guys, grace is important in our lives because it's God's involvement in him acting upon our hearts. It comes through our hearts, to our souls and out through our bodies and into our, our, the rest of us, our relationships around us, which our relationships are just as much a part of who we are as our body, soul and spirit are. And so we need to be aware of that. And that humility comes across also with with God. He's not going to give discernment to a proud person. As a matter of fact, I've noticed a lot of times, it's not that he sits there and says, hmm, I'm not going to give this person grace because they're not humble. What What a lot of it is, he just steps back and he lets circumstances and life and consequences and all that kind of stuff, dumb stuff that we do, just happen. You know, and when it happens, we begin to see that, hey, I wish I would have listened to the Lord. I wish I would have had discernment. I wish I would have had just a little bit of common sense, which is honestly something I struggle with in in my life is, you know, you can you can be really smart and have little common sense. And hey, yeah, I'm sitting here raising my hand. That can be me at times. But humility is where you grow in wisdom. Humility is wisdom. And so if we want to approach God in the whole aspect or idea of discernment, we want to learn to grow in it. 
first we need to saturate and permeate ourselves with just good old fashioned scripture. You know, not not like I said, not not for the sense of getting ready to fight and argue with people, because that's that's where pride comes in. You know, when we fight and argue with people, the Bible talks about numerous places about you give people the truth and in, in kindness and tenderness. Because the goal, you guys, is not to be right. That's pride. The goal, you guys, is to help change the person you're talking to. That's humility. And see, we have to be humble enough to realize that we were just as lost or just as bad off or just as whatever as they were. There's a friend of mine on Facebook. He's newly converted, and I love reading his post. Because he doesn't realize sometimes that he's walking in humility because he realizes that just a few short months ago, this guy was walking in the same stuff of, of, of other people that he's trying to help or correct. And so that comes across sometimes in his post, you know, that, that, that sincerity, that childlike humility. And I think it's effective. The goal is people. I mean, people are all that matter in this life. Not not filling our heads full of knowledge to, to speak the truth, quote, in love with our bat behind our back. You know, we have a loose seal behind our back ready to, we're going to give you some truth today and we're going to beat the stew out of you with it. Anyway, uh, that's just, it doesn't work. I mean, let's just be honest. It doesn't work. Nobody listens to people like that, except other Christians that want to beat other people up with truth. <laughs> You know, most of the, the, the people that, that listen to a lot of these discernment ministries and, and, and all this kind of stuff are other people that, that have the same religious spirit that they have. And that just harkens back to the same pharisaical spirit. And what did the Pharisees lack? Humility. I mean, I think about the parable that Jesus told about the publican and the Pharisee. You know, we need to really look at our hearts. Are we on our knees in front of the cross going, forgive me? I am a miserable sinner. Woe is me. I need you, God. I need your grace. I need your grace to even correct another person. I need you. Or are we the Pharisees sitting back and saying, man, I'm thankful I'm not like those people. You know, they had that false teaching. I'm so thankful that God just, you know, blessed me. And I'm so thankful that I'm part of the remnant that has it all together. I mean, really, that's a reality in our Christian world today. Now, before you go burning me at the stake, I believe in truth. and I believe that we need to tell the truth. I've talked about in other podcasts that I believe that the early church had it right. They fought against heresy, but they also fought against divisiveness. Those were the two important things that they held in tandem together. And even, even in the spirit of Paul, Paul rebukes the guy in, in 1 Corinthians, but in 2 Corinthians, he comes back and he wants to love him. He wants to invite him back in. He has a mercy for him. We need to have that, that humility to be able to have a, a mercy for people. Humility is just essential to, to growing in, in grace, to growing in, in our knowledge and our discernment. We have to walk in that humility. And as we walk in humility and as we walk in the scripture saturation and scripture permeation, we'll be equipped to be able to help people. We'll be equipped to be able to correct people. Because let's face it, you guys, people out there are lost, but they're not going to listen to somebody who's arrogant and proud. But they'll listen to somebody who has a testimony about how they've been arrogant and proud, and God has delivered them from that. And I am. I am a recovering Pharisee. I love to tell people that. And it's just a fact. When I first got saved, I thought that the, the way to reach the world, you guys, was to tell them everything they did wrong. And you know how many people didn't listen to me? A lot. And I lost friends by the droves. And some people would look back and say, oh, well, that's a good thing, you know. It says in the Bible that two people were out in the field and, and one. Anyway, we can twist scripture to say whatever we want it to say. But the reality is, is that Jesus, even when he spoke the truth, he didn't speak it to lose friends. He spoke it and they, they chose to walk away. And even with the rich young ruler, when Jesus basically said, done all the commandments. Yeah, you've done all the right things, but go and sell everything and give it to the poor. Act of humility. What does this guy do? 
He gets sad and walks away from Jesus. What does Jesus do? He doesn't run after him. I know that. But if the guy would have had humility and said, no, I, I, I want to do that, but I need help, Jesus. I need your grace. Maybe the rich young ruler would have been a different story in our Bibles if that's the case. So humility and scripture, those are just two of the biggest things that I think that we need, and we need both of them together. Uh, we even need to approach the scriptures with humility. We need to approach the scriptures all the time. I'm being challenged in the scriptures of things that I've held dear or doctrines that I've I've thought were true or you know, I, I need to be at the place where the Holy Spirit can convict me and then I, I trust the Lord enough in humility to be able to change what I believe, even if it's something I believed for, you know, ten or fifteen years, which has happened quite a bit in my life. The reason I, I'm really starting to uh begin to see this and, and and I have a deep desire to walk in this humility is I went through a massive dark night of the soul or a massive depressive event several years ago. I'll give you a little bit of my testimony. And you guys, I, here I am, an ordained minister. I've been to seminary. I know all this stuff. I know all this truth, blah, 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 ad nauseum. And my life was falling apart. And I had suicidal ideation. I got, I almost was put in the hospital for it. And, you know, Part of the problem with a lot of that was my pride. I thought God should operate this, that, and the other and do certain things because I had doctrines and different things intact in my life, trying to manipulate him or expecting him to do certain things or whatever. And I had to be put at the foot of the cross. And I had to, I had to realize, you guys, that at the foot of the cross, everyone's the same. Everyone's the same. If you're one of those people out there that think you have all the right doctrine and that everybody else is wrong, I'll pray for you. That's a sad place to be at. One of my favorite scholars, a guy named N.T. Wright, says it really well. He says it like this. He says, 80% of what I'm going to teach you today is going to be the truth, and 20% is not. But if I knew what the 20% was, I would change it. And so that's my philosophy, and I know. A lot of people don't like this expression, but it's it's true. I eat the meat and spit out the bones. And I expect you to do that even with me. I want people to go to the Word and go to God in humility and, and check that out. That's the kind of people I think God can use coming up in this world. That's the spirit that I think He wants us to operate in, that spirit of gentleness, the spirit of humility. And I th am so thankful that I went through the experience that I went through. It's one of those kind of things where you guys, I wouldn't go through it again for a million dollars, but I wouldn't trade it for a million dollars either. But I let, like James says, I let it have its perfect work in me that I may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Now, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I got a long way to go. But I do know this, pride is an enemy in my life, and it's public enemy number one, and I want it gone. Thanks, you guys, for listening. I appreciate you listening to this uh, riff, and I love you guys. Thank you for listening to our podcast, and my heart and Lindsay's as well is basically to get the gospel out there, the, the gospel of the kingdom, to get the the gospel of, of Jesus, that real gospel that, that walks in truth and grace.